Welcome to the Fit Filiate Podcast, hosted by Tony Ronke and Lisa Hetherington, where we talk about behaviours and behaviour-based conversations as they apply to affiliate owners and coaches. <clears throat> and welcome back to another episode of the Fit Filiate Podcast, joined again by my favourite co-host, Tony. How are you, sir? Oh, I am well. It's pouring rain here, so other than that, I'm great. Well, it makes a change from snow, I guess, at the moment. Speaking of that, I did just get snow tires off the truck, so I got the summer tires back on, which means that we're definitely going to get another snowstorm, but it's all right. That just means the spring is almost here. It is almost here, that's for sure. So today I thought for our episode, you did, um, where I get all my inspiration for our topics, you did a really insightful post the other day about you know, fitting a square peg into a round hole, and if you're just taking advice from people, gradually it shaves you down until eventually you fit into what they think the hole should be and you lose your identity. Hmm. So lots to unpack in that if we start down the path of standardization, commoditization, all those things, but hmm. also the perils of just getting a template of advice of what somebody else thinks is the best way. Hmm. And go. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, first and foremost, everybody that's listening to this, go ahead and head over to the Instagram and give that post a like and then share it and then comment on it and send us a message. That's what I'm supposed yeah. to say, right? That's the, that's what the social... That's- that's the influencer thing to say, like, yeah. follow, subscribe. I've watched enough YouTube to know how this goes. Uh, no, I, I, I told you before this, when we were when in the green room, the motivation for that came actually came from a conversation we had in a past podcast and that we weren't talking about, um, you know, business help or anything of that nature. It was just in passing, you had said it. And I was like, what a great way to say and what a great metaphorical example to really help people understand you know, just the problem that they're actually pursuing when, when, when pursuing a solution. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and so I thought that it would just be a fun post to make. And generally speaking, I get the most fun out of the ones that ruffle the most feathers. So I was just like, <laughs> I'm going to go with that one, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, square peg round holes, whatever you want to call it, use your own metaphor. It doesn't really matter to me. It's just, it's a matter in the conversation of identity. And if you've listened to the podcast enough, you know that we obviously care a lot about identity, individuality, um, et cetera, intentionality. But really what it comes down to is just, and actually funny enough, I had, I had reposted a Greg Glassman video this morning about that, just in like a brief snippet of him explaining, you know, kind of what it's like to be in possession of this affiliate thing. And like one of the key things in there is that he's like, and no one's going to tell you what to do, right? And like, mm. and what I think is interesting about that, um, and and having been in, in the seat that so many people who are listening to this are in, I know what it's like to be like, it's all on fire, right? Like, mm. it doesn't really matter. Um, and and I know that like, in theory, help seems like a very justified thing, and it absolutely is. But the nature and the manner and the implementation and the execution of help varies so substantially that you have to be just as clear on the help you're requesting as you are the problem that you're seeking help for. Right. And, mm. the, and I think that's a big first part of the problem that we can dig into in a second. And the second part of it is just that, you know, it's absence of identity leads to so many big problems that are so present in so many of the affiliates. And, and I don't mean like identity in terms of like what color you painted your gym and like, you know, mm. would you named it and all those things, but those are obviously parts of identity. They're parts of your brand and they're, they're parts of that sort of ethos that you have. But what I mean by identity is, you know, not only knowing why your affiliate needs to exist, but understanding what you're fighting for to keep it special. Mm. Um, and I think that part is just so overlooked um, and misunderstood or ignored or, honestly, maybe even just discarded, right? Because when you get to a certain point of discomfort, you're just like, I'll do anything, mm-hmm. right? And and I think that that's really what ends up happening for so many people. And I think, you know, when we talk about you, you've got fires to put out and you just want somebody to give you the answer, you're not thinking about the long-term impact or what this takes away from you being special and unique and the fact that you lose some of that because someone's just giving you what they did, so you're becoming a variation of that, I guess, depending on how well you execute it. But we're not thinking about that time. It's like, just give me the bloody answer. Yeah. I just need to put out this fire. And we don't think about that, you know, for every action, there was a, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So down the track, there's a, there's a cost to pay for that. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, it's cliche, right? But nobody really ever loves something until it's gone. And like one of those things yeah. is a terrible thing to look up and realize is that like your dream is gone, right? Yeah. And I don't know how this will be received and how much people really truly understand it. But I think the ones who who have experienced it are definitely going to be nodding their head right now, probably yelling, fuck yeah. Um, the ones who are in it right now, you know, meaning that they are in process of losing themselves. They probably aren't going to get it yet. And the ones who are just in pain and they're still on the other side of like, I need help, but I'm not sure where to get it. They're probably definitely not going to get it. Cause again, at this point they might likely even just give up a kidney to get out of mm. the situation that they're in. And, and I, I'm very sensitive to the fact that everybody's in a different place when they're hearing this information, but we have to come at this from the place of our own values as a company and, and the goal of the company and the values of the company are very specific. And that is to protect the affiliate model as it was designed. Mm. And the, probably the biggest part of, of that affiliate model as it's designed is the one thing that is constantly always attacked by the affiliate owners. Right. And that is, you know, this, this cry and this, this need or this desire for people to just want to be standardized. Right. They just, mm. they want to come in and, um, and I think that all of that help is well intended. I think all of that, you know, advice is for the most part, very, very well intended, but there's a reason why for decades, HQ never touched the affiliate model, right? Like, mm. and Greg was very adamant that like, you know, he had a very dismissive sort of repertoire with it with the cream will rise to the top sort of thing. And like, all that ever did was piss everybody off, right? Because like, first of all, everybody thinks so they're great. the cream, right? Everybody's like, mm. I'm creamy as shit. I'm not rising, like, right? But I'm like, I don't know how to tell you this, but if everybody's the asshole, you're the asshole, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and so there's that part of it too. We, gotta, we have to address the elephant in the room, which is responsibility. And I think we can come back to that too. But it's... The affiliate model was designed to be exactly that, dismissive as it may be. The cream will rise to the top. But here's mm. the thing. You don't pay anything for it, mm. right? Like what you get in exchange for those few thousand dollars, and I get a, a few thousand dollars is a lot of money to a lot of people, like a lot mm. of people. Like that's a whole ass salary for a good chunk of the world, right? But like mm. in exchange for what you're getting, which is a license to use the name, it's worth that five times over. And mm. people just don't really understand that like – if you were going to be paying for more things, right? Mm. And I mean, we've talked about this on a podcast before, but if you were going to be paying for more things, more systems, more procedures, more processes, more, um, you know, more best practices, whatever you want to call them, for one, it would cost substantially more. Mm -hmm. I, I can assure you, it probably would have priced out almost two thirds of the affiliate community as a whole. Um, mm. On top of that, it would be way less fun. 1000 percent right like not only would it have cost you probably likely for example there's a i always like i don't like to say shitty things about other other chains but then there's a company it's now conveniently monikered after the name of what would happen if you were a division one athlete and they're kind of a franchise now but i don't want to give them any publicity and so yeah. this franchise is no different than any other franchise it just has a you know a, a signature colorway and and it has an, an ideological sort of ethos behind it. And it comes with a bunch of systems, procedures, practices, and principles, right? And essentially what you get mm. is it's a quarter of a million dollars. And you must have a half of a million dollar net worth to even be eligible to buy this thing. And then on mm. top of that, you must have liquidity and access of the $250,000 because you need to be able to have a bond or have the cash on hand, right? Mm. Do you know how few affiliates there would actually be? And if they didn't <laughs> exist, the ones who were owned would be owned by asshats. Mm. Just who had the money but weren't doing it for do the right things right. for the right people. We've looked at this prospectus, this financial mm. perspective of, of this franchise you know, uh, agreement and been like, I think this will return 8 to 20% on my money and that's better than the market can do. So I'm in, mm. right? Like, yeah. It would have ruined everything about the affiliate model. Like, mm. And, and a lot of people don't know this because even before like the Reebok thing, like there was also an attempt by private equity to take over the whole company. And yeah. that was exactly what they were going to do, right? They were going to come mm. in and they were going to fix the affiliate model, right? AK, they were going to yeah. franchise it. And in, and the, the belief or the goal was, and I don't know if it was a belief or if it was actually, you know, defined, but like they were going to come in and offer like two levels of service, a franchise option, 
or a license option. And that franchise option was going to be exactly what it sounded like. Mm. We just talked about, but I think people need to reflect on that, that if first and foremost, how valuable CrossFit is, there's no mm. way that that, that licensure, especially with their partnerships with Rogue and everything else, right? Like you would have had to bind the Matt bike stuff. You would have had to have like no bowl in the pro mm. shop. You would have had to have, 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 right? There'd mm. be no discretion for you. Now that might seem like a great idea, and truly, in a lot of the situations, it probably would be a better solution than these people trying to get a master class in entrepreneurship while being mm. bootstrapped. But the thing is, is that there wouldn't even be anything to talk about. You would not have been able to afford the other reality. And I get it. So in exchange for the three grand you wanted to pay, you hope that if you just cry and, and you grab your pitchfork and your torch, that if I just scream for the masses that HQ might just give me a franchise model for free then all yeah. things are going to be good, but that's not going to be the case for one. They would have to come in and change everything. And, and they, people just don't really understand what this is like. I mean, for one, most people's ex, you know, experience and expertise in, in business ownership is limited solely to their affiliate at this point. And they've definitely likely probably not owned a franchise, but the reason people buy franchises is because they don't want to have to think about it. Right. It's a whole system mm. in exchange Fucking for my play. million. Yeah. My million or so dollars. It comes with essentially employees, people, everything I need, marketing, customers, mm. products, et cetera. But like it's millions of dollars. Mm. Right? And there's no medium and, ground, right? There's no way to do that in the middle. And I think that that's what people don't understand. And they don't, you know, the return on that is not as instantaneous as well as you think that it might be. It's like, well, all of this is up front. I've got all these guaranteed things and I'm going to have people in, but it's still going to take a long time to get your ROI back on that investment. Yeah. But Why the other thing think everybody has to have a net worth of like a million dollars and have to have a bond of, of equal or because mm. they, the last thing the franchisers want is the franchisees to realize they're not making any money in the first year and then pull and run. Yeah. And it's interesting. Like I'm, you know, in a few affiliate owner groups around the place and see the things and, you know, people are like, oh, I don't know if my affiliation's worth it. Like the open wasn't that that good this year. Should is that a reason to pull my affiliation? It's like, is that really the problem? Or is it A, you're making it one because you're deflecting on other reasons that things aren't working, but it's, you know, not looking at that bigger picture going, it's not just isolated, you know, you're not just paying for a service. It's the whole context of the brand and the recognition and also then be able to tell your story of what your version of CrossFit is. Yeah. And um, do it well. You know, if, one big part of that too, right? Is that like, is three grand really going to help you? No. Right. Like, I, mm -hmm. I mean, respectfully, it is a lot of money and I'm not trying to be insensitive to anybody's bottom line or their budget. Cause like, sure. If I could take three grand off, it's a few hundred bucks a month. Right. Like that could probably go to internet. Like, mm. It's it's an inconsequential amount of money when amortized over a calendar year, right? Like mm. I get it when you have to write the three thousand dollar check, like that's painful, right? Because you're like, mm. what am I getting for this? Literally everything. I don't know how to mm. tell you this, but like, yes, you could absolutely go rebrand as community fitness or whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you right now that you're lucky that you have the good graces of HQ to just be like, they'll be back, type of thing, mm. right? It's like. Mm. Otherwise, they could just IP us to death. And I think the people who do stay in their loyal are like, you know, go IP them, go get them. But mm -hmm. the reality is, is that it's probably better for HQ to just let them weather the storm and realize that, like, I'm going to keep the door open. Right? Yeah, like, it's better under the umbrella. And the number of people who de-affiliated have re-affiliated, I think, it should not be overlooked. I don't know the number. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it exists anywhere. But, like, mm -hmm. it's not a small one. It's not a small fraction mm -hmm. of a percentage, right? Um, and because a lot of people have realized two things. One, you actually do get a lot by being able to use that verbiage in, in, mm. in your, your publications. But you also get a whole lot in exchange from it by just being a part of something bigger than yourself. Like the mm. irony is not lost on me that when people rebrand to th that community version, they literally mm. go and become an island of one. Right, like so, like it is. It's this hilar like hilariously ironic paradox of like we rebranded mm. the community, but we actually gave up the whole thing. Right? Mm. 
So uh, in, re in regards to what you get for it, and we're not necessarily this, the point of this square peg round hole was not necessarily to defend or, or, you know, support affiliation or otherwise. I mean, we just obviously love affiliates and, and, and frankly, we will always push you to affiliate for many reasons because it just makes good business sense. There's just no place else you can mm. buy a license for that cheap. Mm. And, but most importantly, the thing that everybody wants to give up is also the thing that you're getting. And this is the thing that I think is so important about the square peg and the round hole conversation is that not only are you getting to use the terms and the names and the likeness that is the most recognized fitness brand in the world, literally mm. the most recognized. And I can tell you that because I have the data. It is inconceivably more searched than even the next closest thing. And in fact, mm. it is searched more times by people than all the others behind it combined. Mm. It's yeah, the power is amazing. Right. Whether or not you know what to do with those people when they search for you, that's a you problem. Mm. That's the issue, right? And so we got to turn the mirror around and the, that pointer finger has got to turn back to you and be like, oh, it's this guy, right? Yeah. So there's that part of it. But the thing that you really get in exchange for that, not only do you get all of that, that publicity, essentially, all of that, that community and all of that, that camaraderie that comes with it, you also get the ability to do it however you want. That doesn't exist. Aside from literally having to go out, sign a lease, buy the equipment, come up with your name, Johnny's gym, put it on the wall, and then figure out how to convince everybody that your gym is better than the other hundred, literally, that are in town. Yeah. Like, that is a very different reality than it is, even if there's 15 or 30 affiliates in town. I assure you, yeah. even being one of 30 is still much easier than just being one of a few hundred varying different gyms. Mm. Right? And so I think people need to understand that like the beauty of it is that you get to do it however you want. Mm. I mean, I remember back in, you know, 2020 when, you know, everybody was dropping out and I was like, oh, what's going to happen? Is the company falling over? Whatever. And I looked at it and I went, well, if I'm just 4504 strength and conditioning, who the hell is going to come find me for that? No one is Googling that. And every time I twitched about, oh, affiliation, it's expensive. It's like, and, you know, people would say, you, you know, is it, do you need to drop it? Is it going to be, you know, more cost effective? It's like, that's one membership a year for one person that may have Googled it. I know that most of you search for CrossFit before finding me, whereas you didn't search for 4504 strength and conditioning or whatever it would have happened to have been. It's like, it's, it's bringing the world to you. And again, you're right. It's that's where the conversation gets sticky and ugly that no one wants to have because that's when it's like, oh, well, what they do when they land on my doorstep, that's a me problem, not CrossFit's problem. Mm. Oh, because okay. it's very easy to blame CrossFit. Right. I mean, there's two types of people, right? Those who seek validation and those who seek education, right? And really, it's probably mm. more like those who seek abdication more so than mm. they seek responsibility. And you have to understand, and, and this is not necessarily meant to be an offense to anybody who does this, but the ones who are screaming the most about wanting the most support and the most help, no doubt about it, you're probably, I would assume, in the most amount of pain. And there's help out there, and we'll get to that in a second. But you have to understand, and it starts with one important thing first. You got to take responsibility, right? And that is that, like it's a me problem. It's not a we problem. And, and that lens is going to have to get turned around because first and foremost, if it was a franchise, you probably would not be able, if I'm just being honest, you would probably not be able to fulfill on the agreement. Truly. I don't think you would financially, physically, professionally, otherwise, I, you would probably likely, if they came out with, you know, some standardization, it would probably wipe out half the affiliate model, which would then send HQ scrambling to figure out how to bring up, that water. And then the ones who didn't get phased out would be like, that's rude. Like mm. <laughs> the cream rose to the top. What do you mean? You're trying to fill the bottom of the cup. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you know, so there's that part of it, but I think it really comes down to just the true appreciation. That is you have to believe and you have to love and you have to appreciate that you get to do it however you want. And I understand that it's, you're in a lot of pain right now and it's, it would be much easier for you for it to be somebody else's fault right? Yeah. That you're not getting enough support, not enough help or otherwise. And I'm not being insensitive to that. And I think HQ has done a crazy good job operating with inside the parameters that are important to their values, which is, you know, mm. remaining hands off, 
to the affiliate, but also giving them guidance. Cause I think we all agree that there's some, there's some similarities that are important that we can all obviously, you know, work mm -hmm. together on to bring up that, you know, that high tide that raises all ships. And I think that there's mm -hmm. a lot of people ourselves, HQ, et cetera, that are, that are attempting to do that by providing free content and throwing it out there. And I think that, I think that you're getting that and, and that shouldn't be overlooked. Like the amount of owners who just don't spend any time in, in the affiliate playbook and the affiliate toolkit is just staggering mm -hmm. to me. I'm like, these are the same people you want all this stuff. And now you have all this stuff. You're like, yeah, but I didn't want that stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, oh, I, think, I didn't want to read 60 right. pages or 130 pages yeah. or, you know, I just want that answer to that one problem. Like I don't even want to read to learn. I just yeah. tell me the one thing, the magic pill, give me the blue pill or the red pill, whichever one's going to work. Yeah. And so I think this all stems from, or, or, or leads to, maybe not stems from, probably more so leads to, is this central frustration around the comp, the competitive market of CrossFit. Like, you know, there's hmm. a large amount of people who think that it's saturated or whatever. And no doubt about it, CrossFit has become commoditized. That's not, hmm. you know, that's not an indictment to the brand. In fact, that's actually really the mission and the vision behind any brand, right? Is to get to the point where it's so widely recognized that it becomes the Kleenex, right? Hmm. You know, it becomes brand synonymous and in CrossFit for sure has done it. Anything that even remotely resembles CrossFit or functional fitness rather done in a gym in a globo gym or otherwise, somebody doing some crazy shit in the corner, you're like CrossFitters, right? Like, yeah. you know, so it, no doubt about it. There, there's, there's brand recognition, there's identity and there's commoditization that has gone around it. And the thing about that is, is that everybody is upset because as a whole, they feel as though it has gotten less valuable, right? Like, mm. You know, there's too much competition. Nobody's wanting to pay for it. But here's the thing. Stick with me on this one. You are all the ones who demonstrate the value of the community. Mm. So if if you believe that CrossFit is getting less valuable, that has nothing to do with HQ. Mm. That has everything to do with the people who are on the front line demonstrating, speaking about, and serving that value, which is the affiliates. Right. And so if we agree and we do it, because if you hang on those affiliate owners groups, everybody thinks it's, you know, every devalue is too much competition. It's blah, 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 and everybody can be affiliable. Like all these things, really what you're saying is that we're all doing a terrible job. Mm. Right. And so truly that's one of the reasons why the, the affiliate toolkit does need to exist. Right. Cause like HQ mm. has to do a good job, you know, helping these guys bring up that value so that like commoditization is not a bad thing unless the commoditization also becomes a race to the bottom. Right. Mm. And so like, if you're talking about things like de-affiliating and saving three grand, I assure you, you're in the cockpit of something racing to the bottom, right? Like instead of, yeah. instead of being something that's racing to the top. Mm. And so part of what it means to be, you know, an individual and unique and, 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 be, and be purposeful and as it applies to your affiliate is to know how you intend to implement and apply CrossFit differently than other people. Mm or speak about it differently or communicate it or, or anything. Right. And, and that's where the big breakdown happens. And here's where that post came from, because now that we know, you know, what is the, the motivation behind everybody looking for help and everybody being frustrated is the second part of that is knowing that they need help. And so mm -hmm. here's where the help comes in. They come in to do everything that we just said, right. Which is they come into the commoditization conversation. And instead of solving that, because the solution to commoditization is individuality. Right. Like mm -hmm. if you don't want to be involved in the commoditized prices, AK, like the, the generic prices of something, call it a call it a handbag. Right. Mm -hmm. Make your handbag different. Yeah. Even if it's the same handbag, like if we mm -hmm. all make the same version of the same leather bag, the person who speaks about that leather bag differently wins. They don't yep. need to make a different leather bag. I mean, if you can, you can. But like you don't necessarily even need to do that. But here's where help mm -hmm. comes in. Help comes in and says, hey. Here's what I did, right? Here's mm. my model. I'll sell it to you. Right? And you're like, well, my model for sure sucks. So I'll take that one. How much is it? Whoa, that's expensive. Yeah, but I'll let you make me payments on it. Okay. Mm. That makes it a little bit easier. Right? We're still talking about tens of thousands of dollars yep. for a truly, and if I'm honest, a truly poorly executed franchise model. Mm. There is no widely tested, vetted, scientific backing on whether or not this model will work in every single demographic like there is with McDonald's and any other franchise mm. agreement. Because part of what takes so much work to become a franchisor is that you must be able to prove 
beyond a shadow of a doubt that with this investment to an accredited investor, they're going to get their money back. Otherwise, you're going to end up in a lot of SEC violations and a lot of other uh, business-based violations. So you've got to make sure that's happening. So that doesn't seem to happen when somebody just shows up and they're like, I got a solution, right? They're kind of like the weird pusher on the corner. And mm. what ends up happening is that you, it makes the commoditization conversation worse. So now we've got a fraction of the people who are in pain, who are also complaining about everything, everybody being the same and, and devaluing the community, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so now all these people have bought the same solution. And now they're all running the same marketing, the same ideas, the same concepts, the same everything. And then mm. now all they've done is just become maybe a more expensive version of the same commoditization, which is fine when it's minimal but mm. when all of a sudden you know everybody's doing the same thing it's not any different but what's the big risk in that is that you put all this time energy money and effort into checking the boxes that you need to from the help that you paid for and then when you get done you look up and you're like this isn't anything that i wanted anymore right it's like it's be like yeah. instead of going to the dealership and buying a brand new car realizing that i can't afford the car so mm. I buy the kit of the car and I bring it home and I put it all together and then the car is finished. It runs, drives, it gives me the store and everything I want. And I look at it and it looks nothing like the car that was in the catalog. It looks mm. nothing like the car that I wanted to drive. It's not even the right color. Right. Mm. And then that's the problem. And then the person who sold it to you gets to be like, it literally does everything I said it would do. It runs, mm -hmm. it drives, it gets you to the store, it does everything that's a you problem right? and you're like yeah and that sucks right because mm -hmm. there's an easier way and a better way to do it for the clients there's just not an easier way to do it for the provider like the solution that we took when we decided to do this we knew very clearly it was not the right business decision but it mm -hmm. was the right decision for the community we willingly and knowingly chose the harder route because mm -hmm. it did more good because what we were trying to do was the one thing that no one else was doing. And that was that we were protecting the identity, right? We, mm -hmm. That's why everybody that comes in, the first thing that we identify is what uniquely fucking makes you, you. Mm -hmm. like, and maybe you don't know it and that's okay. Cause we can help you learn that. But like everybody has one. There's a reason why mm -hmm. you dragged that credit card out of your wallet and you took it to rogue and you bought the stuff and you wrote that essay and like, go, go mm -hmm. dig out that essay. I bet you that there's snippets of your why in that essay you sent to HQ right? Mm. There's snippets in your story that you tell to people that you have forgotten about, right? Like if I can mm. just get you on the call, I guarantee you, I can get you back to the beginning of your story when you can tell me how CrossFit changed your life and why mm. owning an affiliate was so important to you. But if you don't remember that, it's not very hard to understand why you'd be so willing to abandon it when mm. things get uncomfortable, Right. And like that's the that's the the predicament and maybe the paradox that we're all in right now is that everybody needs so much help that they're willing to give it up. But I'm here to tell you that you don't need to trim the edges off of your square peg to fit into a round hole because you don't want to do that anyways. Because I assure you, once you slip through that round hole, you're going to find yourself surrounded by a whole lot of more round pegs. And then mm. now you're just one of them, right? The goal of being in business is obviously first and foremost to improve the quality of life of the business owner no doubt about it but it's also to demonstrate why your business needed to exist and i think a lot of it just gets broken down into the fact that you know affiliates are they're seemingly simple they're the anti-business model at the outside looking in and so we want it to be true and we get in and then you know everybody wants to understand they want there to be an easier solution they want there to be some they want it to be somebody else's fault but it's really easy to open an affiliate. Like, yep, very low barrier to entry. Truly low. I mean, even low barrier to entry just sounds condescending. And it's not mm. necessarily meant to be. It's just that, like, it doesn't take much. I mean, it's quite literally a dollar and a dream. Yeah. And you could, you could just go on Craigslist or on Facebook Marketplace and like get a couple of barbells and a couple of, you know, sandbags and like you can do it and do it mm. really, really well out of your gym or out of your garage. So you got a handful of people until your HOA kicks you out and then you go look for a place, right? And then yeah. you charge a little bit more money and you buy a little bit more stuff. And then you figure out how to create the systems and you get some more friends to help you and they start coaching with you. And then you guys together go drive the dream forward and you, you, you share beers and, 
and sandwiches at night talking about like how you're going to change the world and everybody gets motivated and everybody goes back to work the next day and then you get more people in and the next thing you know you sign a bigger lease and like that's yeah. the part of it that is so important to the story that people are just not looking at is that you, everybody wants to just be able to put down money and jump to the front of the test, right? Like mm. it's not going to work that way. Even if you yep. could do it, you probably wouldn't like it. Like you'd look at the franchise model and be like, I don't want to do it that way. Or I don't want to do it that way. There'd be things about it. You just wouldn't like because mm. you have an opinion based on your experience and your exposure to CrossFit. And so if CrossFit just came out and was like, Hey, you're all franchises. Now here's how it's going to happen. There's mm. no shot. It wouldn't alienate a handful of people. Oh, they would blow up you know, and or otherwise, right? Like people would be like, yeah. this is stupid. That's the dumbest on-ramp I've ever seen. Why? Yeah, well, it's, it's different than mine. <laughs> like, it's and it's, it's just that vicious circle of, you know, I guess sometimes when everything's on fire, we get stuck looking at the fires, not, and we lose sight of that, why we're doing it. And it's not about, you know, um, giving members the best toilet paper or the best, whatever, the current complaint is that you're trying to, you know, keep everybody happy. It's, you know, you did this to change the world, to change lives in, in your little corner of the world. And mm -hmm. when you get fixated on the fires and there's that old saying, can't mm -hmm. see the forest for the trees, you know, that's where the beauty of a coach comes in because we, we pull you out of there and say, have a look, stand outside the fire, have a look versus, Hey, yeah, I know you're in the fire, but here's how to, you know, do other things. And, you know, put out the little fires around you. <laughs> it's uh, it, it, there was another post that I had made about like you know the the, the model works perfectly. It, things yes. just don't work or anything that you guys touch, right? And like, yeah. and that's true. <laughs> it's true. That is one hundred percent the truth. And, 100%. and one of the things that I, we say quite a bit around here that unanimously is met with like a dumbstruck look or people are just like scratching their head is that um build a boring business. Yeah. That one thing, that simple statement confuses or incites so much rage in anybody who hears it. Cause they're just like, why would I want to do something boring? I'm like, nobody said it was boring. I said the business yeah. was boring because you need yeah. it to be observable, identifiable, repeatable, and improvable. The more chaotic you make it and the more complex you make it, the least identifiable, improvable, and repeatable it is. Look at fitness. If you mm -hmm. came in and made a workout so ridiculously complicated <laughs> and so complex that people were doing all sorts of different things and made no flow and format, there was all sorts of different skills in it. You could never coach it and you would never no. do that, right? You keep everything elegant and simple, minimum effective dose. How can I elicit the stimulus that I want in the shortest period of time with the, the most amount of intensity? Let's do that. 21, 15, 9. You know, mm. and like, that's it because that's how coaching can happen. That's how change happens because mm. we remove the variables so that we can improve the inputs and the outputs. And so yeah. when people come into business, they do the same thing, right? Instead of like building a 2159 <laughs> solution that they can repeat over and over mm. again, they build a chipper from hell, right? Like, and so <laughs> yeah. it's this whole thing. And anybody walks in, they're like, dude, you want to work out with me? And everybody's like, what even is that workout? It's three whiteboards long. And they're like, yeah, it's the best work. I wrote it myself. Everybody's like, I'm out now. Okay. And like, yeah. that's how we all treat the business in the beginning, because the more we try to fix things, the more complicated we make yeah. them. That's universal. It doesn't, that's not an affiliate owner problem. That is a life problem, both in how you yeah. handle relationships and business, et cetera. So like there's, there's, there's a necessity to keep things simple, stupid. And that's what we're saying about it, Right. But like, I don't want to use the word simple and stupid because then people are just like, Oh, Right, but like, so there's there's that part of it that is that is super important, right? Like, build a boring business. Mm. You know, it's it's not that difficult, right? But like, mm. notoriously, what ends up happening is that we don't know what we're doing, so it's just the curse of the novice, right? Everybody just tries yeah. to make it more complicated for the same reason that when you weren't good at coaching the simplicity and elegance of an air squat, you opened your mouth and word vomited all over anybody <laughs> who would listen to you until they did something that even remotely looked like an air squat. And that's exactly yeah. what you're doing with your business right now. And the better your business gets, the more elegant the solution is going to be, right? The less inputs, the less lever pulling, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you have to be mindful of this when it comes time to go looking for help. Is help going to result in me word vomiting even more? Because mm -hmm. education very often leads to obfuscation, right? Because it just teaches you some half-formed, loosely formed constructs that I need to go forth and take action on. And if I'm good, I'll probably take mm -hmm. action. But if I'm normal... 
I'm probably just going to sit on my hands until I figure out what that is. And that's probably going to mean sitting so long that I never do anything with it. Right. And so mm. action, particularly messy action, always trumps in action. And that's why we are so adamant that, about coaching, because mm. through coaching, it's not about education. It's about action. Right. Show yeah. me what you're doing. Do that again. Let me see it one more time. Mm. Mm. Let me give you one more. Right. And like, why did you do that? Do what? Yeah. All of that. Oh, I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it allows us to see and make changes and affect you at real time. But really what it lets us do is strip away complexity. It gets yeah. you back to a boring business. And because here's the thing that I don't think a lot of people really want to believe. And that is that there is nothing available that I'm aware of. And feel free to blow up my inbox with options. Uh, send them to me. You can send Tony at Par or fit, fit, dash affiliate, or you can send them my paradigm. You can send wherever you want. DM me, do whatever you want to do. Find me a business that is a better business for less money than an affiliate. And by better, it must abide by the four metrics of success of all businesses. It must provide freedom of time, freedom of money, freedom of purpose, and freedom of relationship. You could probably find me a lot of businesses that might make you more money. You can mm. probably find me a lot of businesses that maybe will make you more time. You, you probably won't find any to do freedom of purpose better, but like maybe even relationships you might find. But I bet mm. you, you can't find me one that can do all four of those as well as an affiliate can do for the barrier to entry. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you're going to be swamped with emails. No. And that's why we built this thing to protect the affiliate model because it is so damn good mm. for so many damn reasons. But the number one reason has nothing to do with how fit you're gonna make people who walk in the door. The reason why mm. the affiliate model needed to be protected and preserved and, and supported was that the lessons that affiliate owners are learning is worth far more than they understand at the moment. And if I can do one thing with my time left on this planet, hopefully there's a lot of time left, but with anything that I have left on this planet is to help them understand, it's not about how much fitness you've created, it's about what you've learned in possession of owning that affiliate. And, and mm. that's truly what's the difference between, you know, us as Fit Philly and everybody else is that we're not here to tell you more things to do and to challenge you. We're here to get you to understand and encapsulate and appreciate all the lessons that you've learned and then help you see just how valuable it would be if you applied those lessons to anything else that you did in life. Anything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that always happens with every one of our clients. They have that epiphany because they're just like, wow, this mm -hmm. is amazing. Right. And so... And I think that that's the reason why we decided to do it. But again, you can't find me a business. I know mm. it. And if you can, like, it'll be questionable at best. They cost you less money. Don't worry about your trauma. Don't bring your trauma in this conversation because I know you're about to blow me up and be like, this is not easy. Don't you say my I'm like, I didn't say it was easy. I said, find me mm. a better business with a lower barrier to entry. Yep. I didn't say it was simple doesn't mean easy. We know that. No. Okay, but like, the yeah. bottom line is, is you've made your business complicated. You've made it complex. You've made it so confusing, you don't even know it. The amount of clients that I end up on calls with who can't even report their metrics, mm. that's a problem, right? It, meaning, yeah. if I walked into the gym, I could probably ask every one of your clients to give me their key metrics and their fitness, right? And they could easily spit out mm. their, their back squat PR, front squat, overhead squat, snatch, mm -hmm. clean and jerk, 400 meter time, Fran, Helen, et cetera. Like they could just, just spit them all out, right? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? They know their fitness because they understand their objectives. They understand how to quantify mm -hmm. it. They know how to improve it, right? And we know that to be true because that's what the whiteboard did. Right? That's what you know happened in, in affiliates is that the whiteboard changed everything because mm -hmm. it made fitness, it took fitness from being this, micro or this this arduous boring slightly isolated thing that you did that was over complex in the gym in front of mirrors around a bunch of weirdos and your backs and buys chest and tries hours of cardio all these things and like you what are you even working on right i can't go into a gym into a global gym and watch anybody work out and have any idea what they're doing yeah understand what keep you it have simple before. perfect and that's a great note to wrap up this one this week and lots to think about. But if people are looking to find a way to make it simple, reach out for a chat. Link to the call is in the show notes. And I'll catch you on the next one, good sir. All right, my friends. Adios.